Hi there, it is Alvin from Dr. Wealth. I believe you are enjoying the World Cup matches. At the time of recording, we are in a round of 16, moving into the quarterfinals. And I also believe that you have been seeing a lot of the sponsors of FIFA World Cup along the billboards around the perimeter of the field. And today, of course, I want to talk about these companies, these sponsors where they are listed companies and if there are any investment opportunities that we can look at. So as you can see from this image, this is the list of sponsors, right? Not all of them are listed companies, but we will dig into those that have more public information and investable from a retail investor perspective. First of all, let's find out what is the size of the sponsorship of this uh, World Cup event or even to FIFA itself, right? So let me blow this up for you. As you can see, more than half of the revenue is contributed by television broadcasting rights and we know that it's very expensive if you want to pay to watch World Cup. And uh, the second largest revenue contributor is actually marketing rights and that's where the sponsorship comes from. It's about a third of the revenue. So that is not a small sum. Is it really worth advertising in World Cup? Later we will talk about it. But let's run through the sponsors one by one. The first one I want to talk about is Visa. Uh, it is among the sponsors the largest by market cap, right? And Visa is a well-known brand name that uh, you might even have one card, Visa card in your wallet itself. You might be using it very regularly. So Visa is a payment network and it is the second largest in the world after Union Pay. Union Pay is predominantly used in China and probably due to the sheer uh, demographics and the size of the population in China and that's why it's very easy to get the number one spot. But Visa is a lot more international in the sense and it is second above uh, Mastercard. And in terms of market cap, it's not a small company. It is the 10th largest company in the world by market cap, right? You can see uh, in this list, top is Apple and number 10 is Visa. So it is a very large and successful company already. And in terms of its share price this year, is not done that well, uh, down 3.5%, but relative to the broader index, it's actually quite stable, where the index is down like over 10%. So I would say that Visa is one of the more steadier kind of performer this year. Next one is Coca-Cola, right? another household name, another brand that you find it very familiar. It has a lot of beverages, uh, different kind of brands all around the world. And in terms of market cap, right, comparing within the beverages group of companies, uh, Coca-Cola is second in terms of market cap after Kuizhou Mao Tai, which is a brand in China, a brand of Baijiu, which is a spirit in China. Right? So Coca-Cola is number two in terms of market cap. And in terms of revenue, is number three. Right? You might be surprised, which I am surprised as well. Coca-Cola revenue is actually smaller than PepsiCo. And I believe it's also because PepsiCo has a lot more uh, non-beverages brand like Frito-Lay uh, which is in the snacks business so that is probably one of the reason why PepsiCo has a larger revenue maybe if we strip out the non-beverage revenue from PepsiCo they are probably comparable to what Coca-Cola revenue is generating so in terms of share price performance, Coca-Cola did well this year. It's up 7%, right? Very, very defensive, even in a year where a lot of stocks were being sold down. And relative to the tech stock, they really outperformed by a lot, right? Tech stocks are down like 30%, 40%, and Coca-Cola is up 7%. So there is a very big degree of uh, outperformance here. And you realize that these are Warren Buffett stock, whether it's Visa, whether it's Coca-Cola, and Warren Buffett is really still the best investor in the world, right? He managed to really buy and hold these kind of stocks and with able to withstand the turmoil in the markets and still for Coca-Cola still edged at 7% gain this year. Next we talk about McDonald's. McDonald's is the largest food fast food restaurant chain in the world by the number of locations. Okay, number two is Subway, third is Starbucks. Okay, I don't know why Starbucks is considered fast food. Uh, but that is how they compare and McDonald's is the number one spot. In terms of market cap, it's also the largest restaurant chain in the world, right? Second is Chipotle and third is Yum Brands, which owns the KFC and Taco Bell brands. For a share price, again, very resilient, right? It's up 1% while the general broad market is down 10 percent Next, we have AB InBev. You might not be familiar with this brand, but it is the parent company of Budweiser. Okay, so Budweiser is a sponsor in FIFA World Cup this year. And uh, you can see that AB InBev has a lot of other brands as well, Corona, Stella Artois, it is the largest beer company in the world. Okay? And that's based on revenue, right? It's number one, it's way ahead of Heineken. In fact, the revenue is more than double of Heineken. And uh, in terms of market cap, again, Kuizhou Malta is number one, AB InBev is number two, right? And third is Diageo, which owns a lot of whiskey brands. 
For its share price, did well as well, right? Up 1%. Again, a very defensive kind of business. Whether times are good or bad, people drink. Maybe during bad times, people drink even more, right? To drown their sorrows. Okay, so it's kind of defensive business. And the next one, we will talk about Hyundai and Kia. Both are the Korean automakers. And in terms of uh, automakers' market cap, they are not the largest, right? But uh, Hyundai is 15th, uh, rank 15th, and Kia is rank 20th. And in terms of revenue, they are ranked higher, right? Hyundai is within the top 10 in place, num uh, in number 9th place, and then for Kia is number 13. And even Hyundai is making more revenue than Tesla, right? So just give you a very relative kind of benchmarking. And in terms of share price, they have not been doing well, right? Both Kia and Hyundai are down 21%. Just for your knowledge, Hyundai has a 34% stake in Kia as well. So you can say that Kia is a subsidiary of Hyundai. So that's why they are like co-branding in this uh, sponsorship in FIFA World Cup. Next up, we have Adidas, which is a very well-known sports brand. Okay, so in terms of clothing companies by market cap, Adidas is within the top 10, it's number 9th. Okay, but if we really want to just focus on sports, brand apparel itself then i would say that the competitors that are relevant with the in the sports area will be nike and lululemon right which is uh in that case adidas will be third in terms of market cap and in terms of revenue adidas is ranked better right it's number six so again if we just compare the sports brand it is number two spot right after nike okay and in terms of revenue we can see that uh, adidas is like almost half slightly more than half of nike's revenue so nike is a lot bigger uh, relatively well, share price for Adidas has been terrible this year. It's down 53%. So it has not been a good year for Adidas, right? Relative to the rest of the companies we're looking at, this is uh, down the most. The next one we will be looking at is this uh, company called Meng Niu. And I believe most people outside of China would not know this brand well, but it is a number two brand in terms of market share in China, right? in terms of dairy product. So Ely is number one, Meng Niu is number two. Ely happened to be an Olympic sponsor. So Meng Niu took the World Cup sponsor, which is... I would, in my opinion, better because of a greater viewership. And in terms of Chinese companies market cap, Meng Niu is ranked number 95, uh, just after Qingdao, which is a famous beer brand in China. Okay, so that is just to give you some relativity. relativity. And I also show you that three bottles of yogurt, which you might have a chance to recognize them in the supermarkets around the world. Because these yogurt brands are the ones that were more international uh, as compared to other kind of milk products that they produce. In terms of share price, it's down 22%, similar to the Korean automakers. Next up is another China brand, it's called Hisense. It makes, uh, it's well known for making TVs. And in terms of TV, of course, Samsung is usually the preferred choice. And the market shares have shown that as well. In 2021, Samsung is the number one market leader with 30% market share. LG is number two with 19%. Sony is third. Uh, TCL is fourth. And then Hisense is fifth. Okay, so it is a smaller player, but still among... Uh, the top five in terms of market share and for its share price is down about seven percent this year right relatively again more resilient compared to the broad market especially for hong kong market has been very bad and yet they were able to have a more stable price movement this year considering that we will put this in the defensive category as well so what's the big deal about this sponsorship? Okay, we must understand that these are all consumer brands and consumer brands are mass market products and services and they definitely want to get into the heads of consumer. It's, it's part of the branding, it's part of the mind share they try to get so that when you think of a product or a category, you will think about their brands. So it is crucial and World Cup is the largest sporting event in the world. You have the most number of viewers that watch this sporting event, right? And you can compare it to like the Super Bowl, which is very popular in the US, but it's only just 150 million uh, viewers as compared to 21 8 FIFA World Cup final was a uh, 517 million uh, viewers right so it's totally trash the rest of the sporting events and of course we don't have the 2022 numbers yet but it is believed that the numbers will surpass 21.8 numbers as well right so to get in front of so many audience at once being a sponsor of this FIFA World Cup is really a uh, position that many brands want to be in right because they'll be worried if i don't get in and my competitors do i will be obsolete eventually right so that's where uh, a lot of all these brands are vying for this uh, sponsorship and they pay a top dollar in order to get their brand in front of a lot of the audiences spectators and fans as an investor, I already mentioned that uh, these brands are consumer brands and they are mass market brands and they have this defensive nature as we have seen so far, right? Because Rain or Shine, 
economy good or bad, inflation high or low, a lot of all these products are what we consume on a day-to-day -day basis, which means that we can really categorize them as defensive stocks. And if we take a look at their year-to-date returns, right, you have Coca-Cola and my, uh, McDonald's going up this year, even though the market generally was down. You have Visa, AB, InBev, Hisense drop less than the World Stock Index, which down 17%. Yes, you do have some other brands that are down more than the index, but I guess that is how you can filter out which are the really the more defensive stocks um, that is outperforming the market this year. And given that recession is looming ahead, it might make sense for some of you who are more conservative and want to look at some defensive stock. The World Cup sponsors actually can give you a very good idea where to start. So I hope this video has been interesting to you. Do like this video and subscribe to the channel so that I can make more interesting videos like this for you in the future. Thank you for watching and goodbye.